Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and my first board has arrived. My first AM5 board, my first X670E board has arrived. That isn't part of the review kit. So I obviously got a review kit from AMD and then there was an NDA. Vendors weren't allowed to send me product until today. So this is the first one through the door. I'm actually genuinely excited to get back to showing you kit again. So we're going to do a quick preview. I can't review any of the boards until I've done the other two processes. I'm still just waiting for them from uh, AMD, but I can talk to you about the boards. Now, sadly, I don't have any of the official review guidance from uh, Gigabyte about the master yet. They normally send you like, um, a little guide to teach you about all the stuff. So they would tell me, for example, about what the actual phases and chokes, caps, uh, everything were made up from, what the MOSFETs exactly are. All I can tell you is what's on the box, which is 16 plus two plus two phases, and it's digital VRM. Big heat sinks on it. Uh, and then um, it's got PCI Express 5 uh, with the 16 time slot and the M.2 slot and it's got a catch on it uh, which is basically obviously asus only had a patent for the pcr express cart um, slot for a little while and it is pretty much the pop switch that asus have had on all their other boards that's the only real bad thing i can say about it is they've quite clearly ripped it off from everybody else but board itself uh, now i do have I, I have taken photos of this because i kind of have to for the website but I want to show you everything that is in the box, like the old school days, because I'm just as excited about testing all this new stuff as you are to watch it, because it's been an age since we've had new toys. Uh, so, sticker pack, whether you give a monkeys or not, doesn't really matter. Uh, I think that they could do away with the passport covers, if I'm completely honest. But these little cable things are nice. I think we need more fan stickers, Gigabyte. The ones that literally fit over fans. I've actually just had a load of OC3D ones made for going over uh, different size fans. I'm working on uh, some of these. You may be able to get yourself a sticker pack. But we will see. There's going to be loads of people messaging me wanting them now. Uh, anyway, Aurus badge. And it is an aluminium one. It's not like one of the crappy plasticky ones. It almost looks like it's diamond cut on the top. It's a nice badge. Inside, you get a total of four SATA cables. Then there are a couple of um, RGB extensions. One's a four pin extension. One is an addressable three pin extension. Then you do get a couple. Now these are thermal probes. You can see the little thermal probe on the end there. You attach them to the board and then you can put this thermal probe somewhere. You can put a little bit of tape or something over the top. You could use it to keep an eye on the back plate of your uh, graphics card. You could put it down the side of some memory that might not have the settings. You could put it on the side of a hard drive, like a 3.5 inch hard drive. Although all of those things have um, actual thermal probes in them, but you can have your own. You can just monitor it and you'll be able to monitor it within the software as well. You also get your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongle with a little magnet thing on the bottom. You do get a couple of Aorus branded cable ties, which is kind of nice. Obviously Velcro, so that means you can keep using them. Very nice. And then there is the Q connector, which is basically where you shove your front panel connectors and then it makes it easy to line up on the motherboard. Uh, then this, I've never really understood this. So this is a microphone, and this is so that your board knows how loud your fans are. Yes, uh, that's my thoughts on that in its entirety. Now, the master. Master, for Gigabyte, kind of sits in the upper middle of the range, but it's always been a strong contender. And I mean always been a strong contender. One of the things I am going to say is the black heat sinks you can see that there's lots and lots of fins, very old school, but it means the surface area is massive. Now, I happen to know that Gigabyte didn't really like these multi-fin designs at the start, and I know the guy that pushed to get this done, and he genuinely deserves a pay rise for this bit alone, literally this bit alone, although he does work his nuts off in so many other ways. Um, 
but we've only got the old school aluminium heat sink around the back on the top, but on the beefy area where you're actually going to really get the most build up of heat, you can see the surface area is huge. You can also see that the thick metal comes right the way round the back and you still have all of that on the top. Now I don't believe there is a fan in there. Some of these uh, boards I have found fans hiding in here and that is because we do have a pair of chipsets now because they need one for the PCI Express 5. Uh, so there are three uh, M.2s underneath here and then you've got the Gen 5 one underneath here as you can see with the big heat sink so I'm assuming that we're going to get some heat out of those drives uh, and now we are going to have a good look around the board and I am going to do it by hand so I do apologize let's zoom you in a bit old school now all of those eight pins up there if you look carefully they're all solid that means they're not folded metal or anything like that that means they are made for delivering or accepting lots of power cpu optional cpu fan and then a fan well it's a pump header so let's have a look cpu optional cpu fan and then it says system fan 8 pump so that's all that at the top then you can see you've got your uh four pin rgb there and you come over here there's another four pin rgb and then just below it there's an addressable RGB all up on that top hand corner. So maybe there's, oh yeah, it does say CPU LED actually. There you go. So they're obviously giving you that in case you have uh, RGB on your CPU fan or you need it for an AIO. Uh, then you get power switch here. You've obviously got postcode readout so you can follow any errors. You've got another couple of uh, fan headers here and then you've got the thermal probe. Um, here as well usb 3.1 gen 2 then you do have this which i'm going to try and flick up but effectively that button pulls that back so you can release a graphics card it's basically we're going to call this the asus pcr express button gigabyte i'm going to hate it but that's where i saw it first i've never seen it before so i'm just going to call it that then you've got a couple of well you've got a few uh readouts here so you can use your um, uh, voltage meter. I know I'm struggling, I'm incredibly tired. You use your voltage meter on here and then you've got your postcode LEDs here. So you have CPU boot, there. sorry, CPU, then you have memory, then you have GPU and then you have boot. It goes through each one of those LEDs. That's how you can know what it's doing at the time if you don't know what the numbers mean up here. Then here, this is actually kind of cool. This is two PWM fan headers and they're just horizontal instead of being vertical, kind of like that. Then you have a reset switch here, front panel header here, another thermal probe thing there. This actually, I believe, might be uh, the CPU reset, but um, BIOS reset, but I don't know. We will have to find out. Then you've got two USB 3.2s here two USB 2s here. Now I have seen on some of the boards, they've had three USB 2s. Now that for me is quite handy because my power supply normally plugs into it, my AIO normally plugs into it. Then you haven't got any spare ones for the front panel of the case or anything else that you might need to plug into it and it means you end up having to buy hubs. Um, but we do have three more full size fan headers down here and then another two RGB headers here. You can also see some Japanese capacitors here for the uh, audio and I happen to know that there are some red Weimar um, capacitors underneath here as well which are, are great for the uh, old audio and round the back you can see there is actually not a lot going on up here this is microphone and line out and then that's just a spidiff out so that's really not a great deal of audio hanging out of the back there. But we do have Wi-Fi 6E up here. You've got HDMI and a display port. Now that's going to mean, you know, graphics on the CPU. So that's something that we are going to have to keep an eye on. Then you've got USB-C here and it says uh, 28G there. I was trying to see what this one up here says. I believe it's 10G, D, 
DisplayPort 10G. So you've got two different types of um, USB-Cs there. You can obviously see USB 2 there, and then you've got USB 3.2. Uh, Gen 2 up here, loads more USBs, like there is loads going on there. 2.5 gigahertz, um, gigabit Ethernet. I am really struggling with my words today. Uh, it's mainly because I'm absolutely shattered. And around the back of the board, what we can see is a rather meaty heatsink. Now, it's kind of strange for me to see the AMD clamp and everything around this side, because obviously it is still AM4 compatible, but then when you come around it, again, it's even more confusing because the socket makes me think like 2011, as in Intel 2011 because of the big pin and everything, and then you've got the two AMD things hanging around the outside, which is kind of nuts. Now, we did know about the 16 plus 2 plus 2 uh, power around the outside of the CPU, and I will just give you a zoom in now. So that you can have a look and uh yeah i think we have been all the way around it there is a lot going on with the board but i actually think it's kind of nice because it's still kind of understated there's nothing shouting for your attention the uh gray's got a nice little kind of tinge to it there's a, i know i'm going to sound like a right color freak here but there is a tiny little blue bit of blue to the gray and I really, really do like it. It's understated enough, but you can kind of see that what's there and going on as well. This bit down here where it kind of goes from being uh, very reflective on this into the mat down here is a lovely styling element. I actually kind of wish that they had gone black throughout the board and maybe used, rather than the black writing on here, they could have gone with more of the silver because I think that could have had an immensely stealth set up with it then but again it's just now making me think well you could paint it on you could do this and i shouldn't be thinking those things because i've not even tested it yet one thing we didn't say is there are six satas down this side uh for those of you that are still using uh solid state drivers or mechanicals um so quite a lot hanging off of it plenty of things to plug in plenty of fan headers lots of lighting headers is something that's standing out with this board for me specifically where like i said there was three up in that top right hand corner there's another two down the bottom here i think really you've essentially got an extra um header at the top for your cpu but it does feel rather nice i've not had any confirmed pricing yet but when i do do the full review you will know about it there because obviously I now, uh, within the next few days or so, need to test the AMD CPUs. And then this will be the first motherboard review that I do as a standalone. And I have to admit, guys, I'm very, very much looking forward to it. Please like, subscribe and comment underneath. Feedback is always welcomed. I'm not perfect, but if you want to try and help me be a little bit better, then I'm open all ears. Thank you very much for watching. This has been the tiniest one and I'm out. Ding!